Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So happy yeah. to have you back during these live chats. <laughs> yes, it's been a while since our last live um, because we've been pretty occupied uh, setting up the whole infrastructure of our Shaohongshi Bootcamp. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's taken a lot of time, I think, Chris, especially on your end, because uh, we've really up leveled the whole experience. Yes. And I have to say, just from my point of view, it's really seamless and like top level. So I think it's a very thank great you. user experience <laughs> this time around. So thank you for your hard work. I'm always trying to think about, OK, how can I make this a simple process for someone on the other side? Because, you know, I feel like sometimes websites go overboard with their flashiness and all right, of that, right. but then it's like very confusing mm -hmm. to the user. Anyways. <laughs> Absolutely. And so um, I also want to say if the bootcamp members are here with us and, you yeah. know, we've let some of them in the group, please sound off in the comments and let us know, you know, what everything looks like on your side, the emails, yeah. um, the whole user panel and the group, of course, let us know what your thoughts are so far. We're so interested in hearing from you. Yeah, type below, uh, down below in the comments, hey, if you're joining us live and not catching the replay right now. <laughs> um, how are you, Kinga, today? Great, just just wrapped up my classes for today. Same, so I same. caught a bit, yeah. And that's that's it, hopping on here. And then I'm back to shuttling kids back and forth to different <laughs> classes. Oh my goodness, <laughs> nonstop, nonstop. How about you? Um, good, right now there's a big thunderstorm going on. So if I what? do, if I do lose connection, it's, it's the thunderstorm, not me. <laughs> wow, that's such um, different weather. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I had a full day of classes, started at 9, wow. um, and finished just about uh, 30 minutes ago. So yeah, it's been mm -hmm. a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Weekend. The weekend is here. So. The weekend is here, yes. So uh, we wanted to come on live today to talk about uh, specifically uh, Coach King's experience. So throwing it back to when we first met in launch, um, we ended up connecting finally <laughs> yes. as accountability partners. And, you know, I... Um, like I've shared, I did have a few contacts for my previous platform, um, but those ran up dry really quick. And so mm -hmm. I saw Coach Kinga at the time have zero contacts. And somehow from, you know, it felt like a day, day and night situation. Um, you had a whole line or queue of trials waiting up for you. And I was like, how did you do this? Because, you know, I think one of the main things we may not consider as teachers going into yeah. entrepreneurship is thinking about sustainability within our business. Mm -hmm. So, it, so for me, it was kind of like a slap in the face, like, uh oh, like you need new recurring students uh, to keep this going afloat. So, you know, that was one of my appeals to, you know, your trial influx and your start on Shaohangshu. And so I quickly messaged you and I was like, uh, uh, how did you do this? <laughs> Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So, yeah, um, today we wanted to share a little bit uh, about your insights, Coach Kinga, from the conversion aspect. So kind of the 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 other side of the coin, if you will, of Shaohangshu as your social media marketing tool. Absolutely. I And I definitely will get into that. I just was a little bit inspired by what you said. And it's even been kind of a situation that uh, I have faced recently. And I think a lot of teachers face because Absolutely. I think, um, and I wrote that about this a little bit in the newsletter that, or the email that will be coming out to our subscribers, but I think that sometimes we go into these situations as entrepreneurs or teacherpreneurs with certain expectations 
And with such expectations, it's easy to uh, set yourself up for disappointment. So it's really important to be flexible. And especially like when it comes to your sales strategy, to some degree, um, your, it just means more about adapting to your circumstances. That's what I mean. Um, because, you know, even though like in the beginning, I had a whole bunch of trials set up and, you know, my student base at one point was at maximum capacity. That doesn't mean I can, you know, sign off and stop marketing my business because right. there will be people who uh, renew packages and there will be people who don't renew packages. And I have to be prepared for the fact that maybe they won't. Um, and it's no hard feelings. It's business. Um, so you just have to prepare yourself as a business in those situations. And that kind of is the same thing when, you know, you had a set of WeChat contacts um, and it turns out that maybe they weren't as, you know, on hold to join as maybe you had thought initially, but you had put in all this work in your investment. So it's great to have a source of like marketing, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, you need kind of, it's still, it's cyclical if you will, yeah. um, in a nutshell. So yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so from my perspective, you know, I was, I think, well, looking back, it's, it's hideous, but at the time I thought I was creating great content. <laughs> um, uh, but the thing was I was getting views, I was getting likes, I was getting collects on my notes, but you know, from my point of view, I was struggling to get them into my sales funnel. So what that means yeah. is getting them to do a trial with me or even have the conversation of like, hey, what's your rate? Um, and so oh, yeah. I think that's why I initially uh, messaged you way back when, a year ago now, <laughs> almost, yeah. um, because I saw that you you know, you had fewer posts, I think, than me, but you were still converting it. You were, you know, getting potential clients moving in through your business funnel. So yeah, I'm excited to hear about that insight. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. That's really great. And, you know, to be honest, like, uh, I could practice more of, of what I preach because to be fair, my last post on Xiao Han Shu was in July, but because I think I've built up this I kind was, of. <laughs> I was a while ago too. <laughs> yeah. But because I think we actually engage a lot with the app as a backend user. Exactly. Um, I'm, I, I feel like I'm a bit favored by the algorithm. I still get a steady stream. And you know what I saw today? that my first post on Xiao Han Shu was actually on the discovery page today. Oh. And that was like from one year ago. And it was just like a really Incredible. random post. But I think it's because like, I think I've built that credibility with the app yeah. enough that still my my things are getting out there. So um, yeah, it's it, it takes a lot. It's a process and, and I should post more, but also it's not all about posting. It's not like Instagram where you can hard market. You really have to figure the app out, uh, which we do go in on in, in our boot camp, understanding the algorithm, how it compares to different apps. And then you can really work that in your favor. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. And I did want to go back. Actually, what you said, Chris, leads me into what I wanted to talk about today. And here I am losing my train of thought. <laughs> um, okay. Got it. Okay. I just got it. Sorry. I was like, oh my goodness. Real yeah. life. Um, so actually, you mentioned something that and I did notice that too, that your content was really eye-catching for me. And I just felt really um, inferior compared to you in that degree. And I still feel like that sometimes. And I will be transparent. I saw one of our former boot camp members, I won't say who, but I saw their posts. Uh, they participated in the last boot camp, and I was so blown away. And I saw so many, so much engagement in their posts. I'm sure they're doing well. I'll, I'm going to reach out and ask them about it. And it also made me feel a bit inferior. Like I, you know, full transparency. I'm not the content creation specialist. Chris is okay. 
Um, I can only work my magic in my funnel. Um, but that being said, that there are a lot of teachers on Xiao Han Shu that create beautiful content that's so animated and curated and just very, very eye catching. That's fantastic. That works to some degree, but it it's not the key. Um, right. <laughs> so my first point was setting your intention when you sign up on Xiao Han Shu and really understanding what you're trying to do there. There are lots of teachers on the app who have this beautiful content portfolio. They have thousands of followers and I've heard it from them directly. They haven't converted one lead into a paying student because yeah. something's not clicking. So you have to understand when you set up your Xiao Han Shu profile and you have to really keep that in mind that your aim is to use your profile as a lead magnet to attract students to your sales funnel, whatever that may be, perhaps, perhaps it's WeChat, maybe that's where you do the conversions, um, but you have to really keep that in mind so you don't get sidetracked, so you don't get overstimulated, um, so you don't fall into comparing yourself to other teachers who have lots of followers and like trying to copy their content strategy. You really have to stick to what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve with your app. So that was my first suggestion. Absolutely. And I think that worked for me a lot because there was a lot of imposter syndrome moments for me in the beginning of my journey. Yes, I definitely uh, resonate with that because when I first downloaded the app, um, I was a little bit lost also and kind of intimidated by the app being in a foreign language that I didn't know or speak or mm -hmm. even read. And so when I was able to figure out how to do things and search <laughs> um, and to see other teachers already on there, I guess, pre double reduction policy, which is interesting, you know, these people are in low-key influencers had a great yeah. following had this great content already set up and so i you know i also had similar feelings of like intimidation um mm -hmm. but like you said it was about it's all about setting your attention and knowing that you're um you're a unique teacher and you have your own uh cards to put on the table yeah, absolutely. And every teacher speaks to their own audience, right? Everybody exactly. has their own audience. You know, there are people that we resonate with and that we don't. And there are, you know, certain reasons why we are more uh, attracted perhaps to one person than another in the sense of like uh, professionally. Yeah, <laughs> of course, that's what I meant there. But yeah, it's very important to keep in mind. Yes, exactly. So um, would you be so kind to of share tip two yeah, with us? <laughs> tip number two is one that I think everybody is sick of hearing by now, but I think it's like one that we hear and we're like, yeah, okay, not this again, yeah, but it's yeah. like we don't really keep it in mind. And actually I heard a discussion about this recently. So Tip number two, according to Create and Funnel, is to really zone in on your star student. And if we broaden that, then in the industry, we call it, you know, picking or setting your niche. Niche, niche, tomato, tomato, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's very... <laughs> It's very important, and I still see a lot of teachers resistant to zoning in on a yeah. niche. Um, I heard a discussion on Facebook, or I read a discussion on Facebook recently that, oh, you know, I like the variety, and I can do this very well, and I can do this very well. I know how to do this, so I'm not certain how to pick my niche. And a lot of teachers were sounding out that, oh, you know, I, I like the variety in my classes. And uh, that's what keeps it interesting for me. So I'm not going to pick a niche. And that's great. You know, if your aim is just to work, to enjoy what you do, and you're comfortable with that and the level of income, 
all go for it. But the fact of the matter is, is that the moment that you niche down is the moment that you can validate charging a higher rate because you have some kind of expertise that somebody needs. Yeah, they have a particularly particular demand that you can speak to and you can pose yourself as a solution to their problem. Therefore, setting a higher cost, maybe it requires more um, time invested, maybe it requires more material, maybe it requires your expertise that you have invested in previously. So it really validates charging a higher rate. Think of it this way. Definitely. In the world of medicine, a specialist, like a neurologist, yeah, a cardiologist is always going to earn more money than a general practitioner. Absolutely. Right? Sure. So it's the same thing. Uh, yeah. I agree with that because um, I think the, you know, I definitely understand the, you know, the hearsay of uh, the teachers. Um, and I think it's also something to do perhaps with our mentality being structured or framed, our lens, uh, from our previous platform companies who just mm -hmm, gave mm -hmm. us whatever they wanted to because our time slot was open, for, for instance, um, in some cases. So I, I think it's still that perhaps challenge for all of us to push through that uh, structural change within our mind and and consider mm -hmm. um, other ways or en envision other um, types of teacherpreneur business that Absolutely. doesn't solely rely on like this is my schedule and this is come all students you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a free for all so yeah absolutely absolutely and um I think that that's really great what you said, Chris. I think that our resistance to setting a niche comes from like what you said, we've been conditioned to think um, working for platforms, but also it comes to some degree from a scarcity mindset, which actually ties into the previous. I feel like it's like you're you're Absolutely. afraid to some degree that you're going to miss a booking, you know, you're going to miss a sale, you're going to miss out on something because you close yourself to an opportunity. But the fact of the matter is, if you're letting in all kinds of students in your student base, it's just a mishmash. It's going to require more of your time to like prepare lessons for all these different kinds of students with all these different kinds of demands. Right. And it's not really going to work in your referral marketing strategy as well, because they're also going to be referring more random students. Right. All kind of all over the place, a hodgepodge, if you will. <laughs> Absolutely. So it, it's really important for a variety of factors and a higher rate being one of them. I did want to bring up Mary's comments here. Mm -hmm. um, Mary says, I'm finding it difficult to find my niche for kids. Yeah, so the world of kid kingdom <laughs> um, can be hard to niche down. Um, but for instance, I would try to think of it, uh, Mary, in terms of what is maybe perhaps your favorite part of teaching a younger student. Like for me, I know it's uh, specifically like phonics and those basic uh, letter sounds which can get mundane and repetitive, I'm not gonna lie. But at the end of the day, I feel really comfortable with that. And so I can niche my content or I can niche my students perhaps to more phonic-based beginner uh, type of star student, if you will. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, phonics are a great one. You know, there are reading specialists, um, there are teachers who incorporate other areas of their expertise, like STEM, for example. Um, and I think that sometimes we just like, it's a little bit overwhelming and I totally get it. I've been there before, but sometimes yeah. you don't even realize that you do have a niche. Exactly. You know? Like, I think there's a formula to this and it is what you're good at you know, what, um, what you're good at doing, that also means like, what results are you giving your student, right? Mm -hmm. um, along with what you enjoy doing, like what actually brings you joy. 
And also thinking about what you don't like doing is a huge part of it, right? So. (laughs) I'm a, okay, I know this is going to be controversial, but I'm kind of a big no-no on grammar. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm like, uh, you want a grammar teacher? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. You can another teacher, please. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. I I totally get that. And I think a lot of American teachers feel that way. I, at least I have noticed that, you know, I think we're both of us in Europe. I don't know, Chris, if you have experienced that, that the ESL teachers in Europe are really conditioned, like, to teach grammar and grammar is this just like yeah it's wild. so like powerful like thing and i'm like yeah that and really I, kind of just helps you for writing <laughs> right it depends on My your opinion. it depends on your need right it depends exactly, on the student's exactly. need but if the student wants to speak like you know an an american let's say mm, yeah i don't know how to what degree like the the grammar will be relevant to what it's, exact degree right for everyday I, communication i question the reasoning of having grammar skills on a pedestal here in europe yeah yeah i don't fully understand it <laughs> uh, that's another anyway. that's another live that's another live for sure <laughs> and i'm not i'm not knocking grammar i just think there's a way that you can approach it that doesn't have to be like textbook grammar, right? So that there's oh, a need. absolutely, yeah. There, I've seen many of teachers um, really take a spin on grammar, and absolutely. it's inspiring. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a niche for you, like teaching grammar in a fun and engaging way, or like explaining in in layman's terms. So absolutely. Great, excellent. Um, so would you like to share tip three with us? Yeah, absolutely. So we so far we've had setting your intention with the app, setting your niche or zoning in on your star student, okay? And when you've got those things situated um, beyond you know your content and stuff, which is more of your area of expertise, I would really start thinking about setting up your sales funnel right, which is going to be very, very important for converting those leads into paying students. Um, now, this is really tricky on Xiao Honshu, and it gets trickier every day. The app is always changing, and actually, um, the regulations or how much they are enforced are is also changing, and it's kind of random. So this is always evolving, but the basic idea is that, you know, you can't go on Xiao Hanshu and monetize your profile because you can't really do any hard marketing as a teacher. Um, It's against community standards. And actually, I also learned recently that sharing WeChat IDs, even in private messages, is forbidden because you're directing traffic off the app. So you also have to be very clever about how you do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you want to figure out like beforehand what your paid offers are. You want to figure out, you know, what your rates are. Um, so you can really be firm on those when you get to negotiating the details. You want to really think about how you're going to communicate your offer in your funnel, um, how you're going to respond to certain questions when you get pushback from the other side. You know, you really have to be prepared. I actually had all of those responses automated when I was starting because I wasn't confident in my ability to seal the deal and, you know, or or like bend under pressure. So I actually had my my responses automated. I, I typed them out earlier. I really thought about, you know, what I wanted to communicate. And I also thought about what questions, what was the pattern of questions being asked of me um, by parents. So I was able to come up with some automated responses and uh, I just went off those. So it made, you know, the conversion process actually really easy and seamless for me. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I think that's one of the tips that I first implemented when you Mm -hmm. suggested it was to recognize um, the questions I was getting, the pattern of questions I was getting, and then... um, creating responses for that and saving them in like my notes app and whenever i would get a question i had that ready to go and i took it a step further 
in my notes up, I had like the English response and I, mm -hmm. and then I also had it translated to Chinese so that I could send it out in Chinese and, and have this uh, level of comfortness, at least for my customer. Because uh, I know, you know, I can always translate something, but maybe my customer may not feel as confident or as willing to if I respond in English. Absolutely. And there was another reason for this for me as well, because for me, it was just the volume of inquiries I was receiving within that first month. I think it was like, uh, I, I think I did 20 trials in the first month. And I successfully converted 15. Um, so, you know, that was a lot of conversation. And I have to be honest with you guys, sometimes in that first month, I was, I was messaging from morning to night, because I just knew how yeah. important instantaneous response was in your sales funnel. If I had missed a minute, you know, if I had left them lingering, maybe I wouldn't have closed the deal. So that was another reason why I automated those responses so I could strike while the iron is hot. If they have a question, bam, here's the answer. Okay, next yeah. question, bam, here's the answer. Are you interested? And then, you know, when you feel like they ghost you, they're not really responding, you got to push them a little bit, right? Because, you know, you, you need to know, you know, are you in or are you out? Because if you're out, you know, there's no reason to to continue or hope or anything. You really got to be concrete about what the situation is. Absolutely. I know. I One mom was very bold and okay. she was like, uh, teacher, do you not have a do you not have a secretary? And I was like, girl, I wish. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but I wish. Uh -huh. Yeah. I kind of just I sent her a little laughing sticker. It just cracked me up. <laughs> that but that's so cute because I think she had a lot of confidence in your abilities. Like you're so, you know, like, you're so involved, you need a secretary by now. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, mom, I'm just I'm in between lessons. I'm trying to answer to you between lessons. Mm -hmm. Between my little five minute break. Um Oh, anyways. <laughs> yeah. And Chris, spoiler alert, a little teaser about the automated responses. I don't know yeah. if I can share some tea there. <laughs> yes. Well, Hashtag well, the tea. <laughs> um, actually, in our newest resource, for teachers, which our bootcamp members will be receiving exclusively. Um, we will be creating a WeChat guide, but also our WeChat guide will be totally enhanced with our sales templates for commonly or frequently asked questions. They're kind of like templates for like the most commonly asked questions on WeChat and especially for conversion. So going from like initial class inquiry or establishing, you know, the trial class or um, things like expressing your rates and stuff like that. So we are going to be working on sharing those responses with you and our bootcamp members will be the first to receive them. To see them. Yeah. And that will be ready next week. Um, next week. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the tea. That's the tea. I love it. It's uh, boiling. Yeah. <laughs> um, excellent. So I really loved um, all the tips you had to share. share. Setting your intention, um, zone in on your star student, and last but not least, setting up your sales funnel. So would you say that, you know, would you are you still applying these tips a year now into your independent teaching business yeah absolutely i think they're always very very relevant and you know you have like i said you have to be flexible so you have to be willing to uh, adjust them depending on outside circumstances like i said the landscape of xiao Hanshu is always changing so you know how your sales funnel 
may look one day may differ another day it might you might have to use a different uh, yeah. communication <laughs> tool who knows you have to be prepared for yeah. what may change by now we should be used to the fact that teaching esl on the chinese market is very dynamic and there's nothing stable about it so you have to be versatile <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely definitely definitely um yeah i think when we first started talking i had no idea about this <laughs> mm -hmm. i was like <laughs> i was like pretty works right <laughs> it doesn't yeah. um so i really you know also implemented you know your suggestion setting your intention um zoning on the type of student i wanted which which were younger students of course um, and then the sales funnel, having those responses ready to go was uh, game changing. Absolutely. But, you know, going back to what you said, Chris, that pretty works, it does to some degree. And that's like why I think we connected because yeah. as the influx of teachers grew, I noticed that my uh, content started paling in comparison. So I think that combined with a very strong effective and attractive content strategy and you know uh, the confidence and the skills to uh make those conversions in your sales funnel will really set you up for success so that's really why our expertise has been combined and and we continue to just share that with teachers yes and it's so uh motivating to um to you know, see your revenue and your progress on the first month on Shahanshu, um, because I think um, teachers may feel like it's um, inundated by other teacherpreneurs on the app, mm -hmm. and we want to come on and say that while that may be true that's always kind of been true even pre uh, double reduction policy so really focusing on these steps plus a content creation strategy is really the whole package you need to be successful on Sha Hangshu. absolutely absolutely definitely and you know um full transparency you know a lot of why that income happened to such a large degree in the first month was because i was selling larger packages that i realized didn't you know wasn't actually as sustainable for my business as i had thought but a lot of it also had to do with the fact that i was able to close the deal on higher rates that i set for myself and what i am personally impressed by you know by my own story which I know that doesn't sound very objective, but like sometimes you got to take stock of what you went through and I'm just kind of processing it now. And I, I was, I came from a platform that, you know, I taught $15 per hour and that was like the cap. I didn't think that I could ever evolve beyond that rate. Um, so when I was converting clients at $50 an hour, I was like, this is insane. I can't believe it. So, <laughs> so, you know, it just, it's just all about strategy. And, and once you get that first sale, you just, it's just such a rush and a boost of confidence that the rest are just like. I, yes, I think my very first sell is kind of like a permanent memory for the rest mm -hmm. of my life i can remember that day really a cool. core memory easy. core memory yes mm -hmm. so um everyone who is attending the live um right now is your opportunity to ask some questions to both kinga and i if you're watching the replay go ahead and leave your question and tag um at creative funnel so that we can get to your comments later. <laughs> um, so while we wait for people to type in some questions, Kinga, um, how would you, so what would you say to someone who perhaps mm, is creating good content, has kind of an automated response ready to go, but still isn't seeing some results? Do you think mm -hmm. there's something wrong in that setup or something that has to be refreshed? 
I think it's uh, it's something to do with sales that it's not clicking because you know sales are like absolutely it's they're not always tangible. It's like an art in some way. It's uh, I agree. Yeah, it's like something you just gotta flow with it. Like you feel the person out. You gotta you gotta kind of you know see where they're coming from. Change your strategy based on based on you know who you're communicating with so there's just something not clicking perhaps in in the okay. sales and communication perhaps between you and your lead in your sales funnel um, or the offer is not speaking to them for example you know if you're uh if you're if they're questioning your prices you know it, maybe you're speaking to the wrong audience um right sometimes those people filter through content. Exactly. Right, right, exactly. Those will happen. But you know, if you're getting tons of people who are questioning your value, then you have to kind of go back, trace your steps back and figure out like what's not really clicking there. I loved what you said about your the response, because perhaps an automated response can be a jumping off point. And then you yeah. have to kind of get in and be creative, uh, so to speak. <laughs> Absolutely. And I will be honest with you guys that, you know, a lot of my conversions come from the fact that I know a lot about China. I know a lot about Chinese culture. I visited exactly. China and I really build on that and use that to my advantage yeah. that, you know, Chinese people are just so elated to hear that somebody knows like some piece of news from China or knows the culture very well or knows the city where they come from and the food that they serve there. It's just like, Yes. It breaks that wall of this person is trying to sell me something versus, hey, this is a really interesting person. I'm actually interested in building a relationship with them, whether it's professionally. But, you know, um, now the first few clients that I've uh, converted, they're like, you know, my daughter just dreams about meeting you. She wants you to come to her birthday like you, we're great friends by now. And, and that's that's what can come of that. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I think. Um... I had to push myself to learn more, even more about uh, their culture and their backgrounds and origins. And something that brought me uh, to researching, like my first point was about first tier cities when you mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, wow, what is that? And so then mm -hmm. I found out that in Shaohangshu, uh, a lot of the users are actually from these first tier cities. Yes. Do you want to perhaps break that down, what that means to our lovely viewers? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The The tier system in China has to do with like how developed the city is, of course, their economy. And that is a huge, you know, um, influence on what a client will be able to pay you. And I learned that very quickly because um, I used to work for a company based in a second tier city, Nanjing, and that's why um, a lot of my students were coming from those lower level markets where they had just, you know, a range that they had in mind for what they would like to invest for lessons. And, and my rate was a little bit above that. So I wanted to target those first tier clients who came from cities like, I believe that would be Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing. Guangdong, those are the really developing cities with a really developed economic market or system and where clients are kind of willing to invest top dollar, especially for educational exactly. services. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, they're always going to negotiate and bargain. It's just, Either it's way, just yeah. their nature. Like, you know, that not always, but it will happen more often than not, not but it's important to rem un understand the market. I think during the last boot camp, Chris, we talked about how much parents in first year cities invest in music lessons. And the exactly. starting point was like $150 an hour or something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> there it's the money's there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and a fun fact, uh, a huge percentage of the demographic of the Xiaohangshu app, so the users, the number of users, the majority are from first tier cities. So that I think is a useful data point to know because um, this is a space or a tool that we um, 
we can see ourselves in, we are um, able to find our star student through the, Absolutely. Through the tool. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And you have to know what they're looking for as well, what kind of exactly. teachers they may be looking for. Right. So that's also very important. So we have some few questions. Do you want to tackle okay. them? Yeah. So this is from Christy. Hi, Christy. How do you find your niche market or how can they find you? I'm struggling with it. Uh, follow up with all with with it all being in Chinese. Um, so this is <laughs> this is assuming that Christy has established her niche, right? I I assume. I'm, let's assume that. Yeah, I think maybe you could go in on this, Chris, because this is more about like probably optimizing your content in a way that it would, you know, speak to your niche market, right? So maybe you can kind of right. elaborate on that there. Absolutely. So Christy, uh, this is with the assumption that your niche is already figured out. Um, mm -hmm. It's all. It comes down to looking at your posts, or in Xiaohangshu, it's called notes. And we want to think about the title of your notes, specifically um, how you're uh, drafting up the title, because mm -hmm. you don't simply want to put a brief title about what the video is. You really want to um, extend or specific be specific about what the note is because the algorithm will pick up on as many keywords as it can within the title to hopefully push that into yeah. um, other Xiaohongshu users uh, feed or as we know it discovery page absolutely and i just thought of another thing chris if i can um there's another benefit to actually establishing your niche um, especially on Xiaohanshu, because like I said, it's not Instagram where we can hard market, right? Right. Our, our offer. Um, optimizing your content with keywords that are related to your niche allows you to provide value to your niche market without necessarily selling to them. Yeah. So it will build that connection. And so actually, Christy, I would answer in two parts here. Definitely optimize the content, your caption, use keywords, but also be sure that you are providing value to your star student in your content. So if you're working on perfecting pronunciation and confidence, then demonstrate in short video format how they can do that and be sure to show up for them regularly and consistently. And um build rapport with them through call to action outside of hard marketing your classes. So these are all exactly. really important points. Yes, awesome. And then um, Mary asked, how much time should I devote to Xiaohang Shu for effective sales funneling? I think this one's more in your realm, perhaps. That, that's a great question, Mary. I really appreciate that one. Um, the answer is as much as it takes. And to go more in Agreed. depth here, <laughs> It depends on where you are in your journey. So when I was broke as a joke with no students, I had nothing else to do but invest my time in building my Xiaohanshu profile and my sales funnel, et cetera. And basically I did, I just invested every free minute and waking hour in building the student base via this app. Um, but then once I started getting more students in my student base, then I was, you know, at less regular, I would say. Yeah. So my activity kind of died down. I still engage on the app because I like the app generally. And a lot of you actually reach out to me on the app. So there's also that part of it. Um, but now that my student base is full, I would say that my engagement there is minimal. Ideally, you, you should still be consistent. So like I said, do as I say, not as I do because you still need that kind of steady stream or trickle. Um, but you know, it's also important to look at your student base. If you're at a point where your student base is full, then you can also implement another marketing strategy, which is referrals to grow and scale your business. So it's really not like a one size fits all. It's really like um, adjusted to where you are in your journey and how full your student base is. 
exactly, exactly. Yeah, so Marie says, I have 75% of my students, awesome. Yeah, so I would, you know, really work with your current student base. Um, they could possibly refer Building students. Off of the referrals, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, posting uh, from time to time on Xiao Hanshu is still a good thing in case they don't, uh, they don't renew their packages or you're still trying to fill up a few slots. Great. Um, all right. Uh, Christy again, uh, what are the no-nos? <laughs> like you said, don't give WeChat ID. Absolutely. So that's one of them, um, not implementing your WeChat ID. Another no-no kind of to add on to this is to not add your WeChat into your mm -hmm. content. Um, and in tangent to that, don't uh, say, message me on blah, blah, blah. Yeah, As no your directing traffic. Call to action, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So perhaps uh, other ways um, of doing that is saying a comment below um, about something related to whatever you created, for example. Mm -hmm. More <laughs> engagement, right. Exactly. Um, some other no-nos, um, having pixelated photos or videos. Um, we want to make sure that your quality is is um, is clear, so mm -hmm. we don't want any pixelated photos or videos in any part of your Shahangshu profile or content. Um, another, any other no nos I'm missing off the top of my head? <laughs> Just no hard marketing. Exactly. It's exactly. not sustainable in the long term, and it might get you in trouble, and it might get you locked out of your profile. So it's better not to opt for that strategy. Yeah, I think that kind of uh, sums it up in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, wonderful. Great. Any other last questions? OK. <laughs> well, um, for those of you watching or watching the replay, um, and I don't know, perhaps to you, Coach Kinga, uh, would Y'all let me ask you a question of sorts. Yes. <laughs> so the suspense uh, is killing me. Uh, the drama, I love it. <laughs> so if we could spend perhaps the next five minutes to tell you about um, a little boot camp that we created that perhaps can get you your first 7K in the first month. Um, would you be down? <laughs> I'd be down uh, for another 7K before Christmas. For, for Christmas, right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's get into it. Um, as you all know, we are presenting, we are opening our doors this Monday to the Xiao Hangshu Bootcamp, which is a live five day bootcamp. This is our fourth series, and we're really proud of what all the work that we've done. Um, because the first three rounds were all learning experiences for us, also getting feedback from the community. And so mm -hmm. I think this fourth round, uh, for me, it feels like the third time is a charm, <laughs> even right. though it's been before. <laughs> um, but what we have to offer in the Xiao Hangshu boot camp is a lot of things. For instance, our first main part of the boot camp is the training days. So there's three training days within the boot camp mm -hmm. that are geared toward Xiao Hang Shu, um, understanding it from A to Z. <laughs> so getting to the profile, um, how to set up, then talking about the algorithm, user behavior, how to interact with that user behavior, mm -hmm. and how to optimize your posts so that your posts can uh, show up on the Discover page of your potential customers. And then obviously, Coach Kinga uh, with sealing the deal and how to get those leads into conversions. <laughs> yes. um, so that's one part of the bootcamp. But we, in addition to that, you also get an exclusive Facebook community, um, which we are we have opened the doors to already, and we're yes. uh, accepting members um, 
as quickly as we can. Right. Um, and that is definitely just a space, uh, an exclusive space so that like-minded teachpreneurs can help each other. You can also get our direct attention, of course, through that. And Absolutely. in tangent to that is our Telegram exclusive community, which also helps um, build this um, support network because I think mm -hmm. it takes a village uh, to get anywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. In addition to that, um, you also get a step-by-step -step training workbook, which follows the three training dates um, so that you can go and then implement uh, on your own. And speaking about implementation, we also have included implementation days where mm -hmm. you can go and try out all the new tactics, strategies, and techniques that we have, we are going to show you. Right. <laughs> And so all of that has a lot of value. Um, we estimated over $600 in value. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're not going to charge you that <laughs> no. um, for this boot camp. And so we're, what we are going to charge you is the special offer of $37 uh, to enroll now in the five-day live Xiaohangshu boot camp. And so you can go enroll now at creativefunnel.com forward slash Xiaohangshu bootcamp. Um, you can read more about the calendar, the specific training dates, the bonuses that you're going to get, including the free WeChat ultimate guide with those uh, sales templates that Coach yes. Kinga mentioned previously. Um, and yes, sign up and we open our doors on Monday. Soon. Yeah, with our first launch party. Is that right, Chris? Yes, our pre-launch party to get you motivated, mm -hmm. to set you up, um, and get you into training day one on a on a on, on the right foot, if you will. Yes. <laughs> Very exciting, super. And uh, going back to the um, Telegram channel, I think it's also a great way. What you said to get our direct attention. Exactly. Um, I know that's something that's in demand because, you know, I do have and Chris has a lot of teachers in our inboxes asking uh, to troubleshoot this issue or that or having a look at your profile. So that is a really great chance to if you're going to start out on this Shaohan Shu journey or if you need to optimize it, if the sales are not working, this is the chance where you can get more direct coaching during those five days from either Chris or I on a very specific issue um, because we are really uh, rooting for your success. And, and we, we have helped a lot of teachers in the previous bootcamp. Like I said, when I visited um, one of the members pages today, I was just completely blown away. So it's, it's really amazing what can be achieved through those five days. Yes, exactly. All righty. Well, that is um, the end of our live today. Thank you all those that have sticked around with us through the full hour and those that were uh, stuck, stuck around to hear um, our boot camp promotion. So yeah, um, without further ado, I think uh, we can end the live, right? Signing off. See you all in right. the boot camp, guys. Take care. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.